ZF8HP70 teardown. After we remove the torque converter, notice the ribs on the outside for the lockup clutch disc inside the converter. With the torque converter removed, we next remove the pan. Notice the fluid coming out of the vent. It's clear, not red. Next, we remove the pan bolts. After removing the pan bolts and the pan, Notice the filter is integrated with the pan. To remove the valve body, start at the back. Remove the output speed sensor bolt and remove the sensor. Next, we remove the three rear valve body bolts. Then pull the solenoid connector locking clamp all the way up. And then remove the solenoid connector. Remove the large head valve body bolts and lift the valve body off the case. Before removing the pump, the o-ring for the lockup clutch needs to be removed from the input shaft. Then remove the pump bolts and throw them away. You will need to replace them with new ones during assembly. Gently pry the pump forward and remove the pump assembly. Remove the B-clutch seal from the case. Then remove the P1 ring gear. Then remove the B-clutches. Next, we remove the extension housing bolts and remove the extension housing. Using a screwdriver, remove the rear seal. And then remove the snap ring that holds the output shaft in the rear case bearing. Next, remove the main gear train from the case. Be very careful not to damage the gear train when removing it. This gear train can be heavy. The proper way to remove the gear train is to lift the gear train from the case and then place it in a holding fixture such as a foot press shown here. To remove this snap ring, insert the screwdriver 180 degrees from the open end. You will need the special tool to keep from damaging the drum. Insert the special tool and pry the snap ring and out it comes and no damage to the drum more on that later next remove the P1 planet then the P1 P2 sun gear then remove the input shaft with the P2 planet remove the P2 ring gear and P3 sun gear and then remove the sub drum assembly Place the assembly on a suitable support, such as a foot press shown here. Earlier I mentioned a special tool that helps to prevent damage to the drum while removing the snap ring. Shown here is a crack from not using the special tool. Place the special tool on the open end of the snap ring with one dimple and insert the screwdriver and pry backwards. Using a pick, lift the open end of the snap ring and the snap ring comes out. and no damage to the drum. Remove the P3 planet and then the P4 sun gear and C and E clutch retainer. Place the P3 planet on the foot press and place the C and E clutch retainer on the planet. Remove the snap ring and then remove the P3 ring gear. Remove the other snap ring and then remove the E clutch and now remove the C clutch. To remove the P4 planet carrier and output shaft from the P4 ring gear drum, the following needs to be done. First, bend the tabs that hold the retainer from rotating. 
Next, lay the assembly on its side and rotate the retainer so that it lines up with the open ends in the part gear and the retainer falls out. Next, remove the part gear then push the output shaft forward and remove it from the P4 ring gear drum. A clutch drum teardown. First remove the snap ring and then remove the clutch hub with the clutches. To remove the B clutch piston Locate the apply hole above the locating tab. Place one hand on the piston and gently apply air in the apply hole. Then remove the B piston from the assembly. A clutch piston removal. Place the drum in a suitable press and compress the bevel spring. Remove the spring retainer halves and release the spring and remove it. Remove the piston by pulling up on it. Notice the six bolts that hold the pump halves together. Remove all six bolts and throw away. You need to replace them with new ones. After removing the bolts, separate the pump halves. Notice the pump drive chain. Gently pry up on the pump and remove the pump, chain, and drive hub. See clutch drum disassembly. Place a flat piece of metal on the foot press to support the inner hub of the C clutch drum. This hub will try to move downward while compressing the spring. Place the drum on the foot press and press the piston. Remove the snap ring and then the piston, the bevel spring, the cushion spring, and the clutches. See how easily the hub is removed from the drum. D clutch drum disassembly. Remove the snap ring. Then remove the pressure plate and the clutches and the cushion plate. The retainer is unique. There is no snap ring. To remove it, you press it down and turn it using a punch or a screwdriver and a hammer to align the teeth. Then release it and remove it. Remove the bevel spring. Then remove the piston. Notice the seal in the bottom of the drum. It cannot be replaced without replacing the drum assembly. E-clutch disassembly. Place the E-clutch drum in the press and press the piston down and remove the snap ring. And just about hit the cameraman, but it's out of there. Use eye protection when removing snap rings. This one went flying. Release the piston and remove it the bevel spring, the cushion, and the rest of the clutches. The method of applying a force to a clutch pack then measuring the clearance works well as long as you have the tools. Primarily the force gauge. If you do not have a force gauge then you need an alternate method. The following is an alternate method for checking the A-clutch. First, we measure all we can, then subtract everything we can, and what is left is the clearance. The first thing we need to do is measure from the top of the drum to the top of the piston. This measurement is 1 inch, 196 and a half thousandths. Next, we measure the top of the drum to the top of the snap ring. Our measurement is 222 thousandths of an inch. Taking our previous measurement of 1 inch 196 and a half thousandths and subtract 222 thousandths, that will leave us with 974 and a half thousandths. 
Next, measure the snap ring and subtract from the previous total of 974 and a half thousandths. The snap ring measures 93 thousandths. Subtract that from 974 and a half thousandths, and that leaves us with 881 and a half thousandths. Next, we measure the pressure plate and subtract. The pressure plate measures 118 thousandths. Subtract that from 881 and a half thousandths, and that will leave us with a total of 763 and a half thousandths. And now for our final measurement. We need to measure the clutch pack height with 45 pounds of force applied. Because we do not have a force gauge, we will simply place 45 pounds of weight on top of the clutch pack and then measure the height. We have two different methods I'm showing here. One of these is using a height gauge and the other one will be using a depth micrometer. Both of these produce a measurement of 704 thousandths. Taking 704 thousandths and subtracting that from 763 and a half thousandths, that will give us a final measurement of 59 and a half thousandths that would be left over, which is our clearance. Using what we learned from measuring the A clutch, we will apply it to the B clutch measurement. First, measure from the mounting surface of the pump in the case to the base of the spline. That measurement is 2 inches, 403 thousandths. Next, measure from the top of the piston to the pump to case surface, making sure the piston is retracted all the way, and subtract from the previous measurement. The measurement of 1 inch, 294 thousandths, subtracted from 2 inches, 403 thousandths, will give us a total of 1 inch, 109 thousandths. Measuring the B-clutch pack height with 112 pounds of weight, or 500 newtons, we get 1 inch 45 thousandths. Subtract that from 1 inch 109 thousandths, and our total is 64 thousandths, which equals our clearance. With the inner hub inserted in the C-clutch drum, place a suitable bushing driver in the hub and place it on a bench. Using a bar stock measured to the bottom of the spline, our measurement is 2 inches 928 thousandths. Next, subtract the bar stock height, which is 1 inch, and that should equal 1 inch 928 thousandths. Remove the hub from the drum and install the pistons on the hub and insert the snap ring. Place the hub and pistons upside down on a bench and measure from the piston to the bench surface. You may need some weight on the hub to stabilize the assembly or a co-worker to hold it. Our measurement is 652 thousandths. Subtract that from 1 inch 928 thousandths and the total is 1 inch 276 thousandths. An alternate method is to completely assemble the pack without the clutches and use a veneer caliper to measure. Now measure the clutch pack height with 45 pounds or 200 newtons of force applied to the clutch pack. Our measurement is 1 inch 190 thousandths and subtract that from our previous measurement of 1 inch 276 thousandths and we get a total of 86 thousandths. That is our clutch pack clearance. The D clutch drum is made from stamped steel. Because of this the top surface may be uneven. We will mark a place on the drum and take all drum measurements in the same place. Measure from the top of the drum to the top of the piston. Our measurement is 1 inch, 212 and a half thousandths. Next, measure from the top of the drum to the top of the snap ring while holding the snap ring in the top of the groove. Our measurement is 260 and a half thousandths. Subtract that from 1 inch 212 and a half thousandths and that equals 952 thousandths. Next measure the pressure plate and we get 118 thousandths and we'll subtract that from 952 thousandths and that equals 834 thousandths. Now we measure the snap ring and that measurement is 77 thousandths and we'll subtract that from 834 thousandths. And our total is 757 thousandths. 
Last measurement will be we measure the clutch pack height using 45 pounds or 200 newtons of force. The pack height is 687 and a half thousandths and we'll subtract that from 757 thousandths and our total clearance will be 69 and a half thousandths. The E-clutch is similar to the C-clutch, but this time we will have to use a bushing driver on the top of the drum. Notice the gap on top when we put our bar stock across the drum. We are using the bushing driver to take measurements relative to each other. Turn the assembly upside down and stabilize it with weight, or a co-worker can hold it. Measure from the top of the piston to the bench. Our measurement is 1 inch, 2 thousandths. Remove the piston and turn the drum upright and install the same bushing driver into the drum. Using our bar stock, measure down to the bottom of the spline. Our measurement is 3 inches, 91 thousandths. And subtract the bar stock height, which is 1 inch, and that should equal 2 inches, 91 thousandths. And now subtract the previous measurement. We have 2 inches, 91 thousandths, and we are subtracting 1 inch, 2 thousandths, and that gives us a total of 1 inch, 89 thousandths. Measure the clutch pack height using 45 pounds or 200 newtons of force, and our measurement is 1 inch, 7 thousandths, and we'll subtract that from the previous total of 1 inch, 89 thousandths, and that gives us a total of 82 thousandths, that is our clutch pack clearance.